Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's Crystal Ann Compton. I hope you are having a beautiful day. Wherever you are on the planet today, where are you? I'm in Texas. I'm still in Texas. That's right, I'm in Texas. Um, today I am actually making a video to answer one of our viewers' questions. Now, I love to do this because, first of all, when you ask me questions, it allows me to serve the community at a higher level, but also I like the questions because they help me connect to you. Now, before we go into the question, I just want to remind you that we have the Intuitive Intensive coming up in January of 2021. To be specific, we start on January 17th. So we have less than two weeks before we begin. And if you are on the fence, if you are thinking about it, I want to strongly encourage you to at least check out the intensive, see what we're going to be doing, see what students will be learning, all the meditations, all the techniques, and of course, the live group coaching. This is a program that will change your life. I'm telling you, it'll change your life. All you got to do is show up with an open heart and an open mind, and you will shift the 2021 intuitive intensive coming at you soon. I also want to tell everybody that if you want to stay connected to me, we can do that as well via text. If you go to textcac.com, there'll be a phone number and you can just text that number and you and I can stay connected. So when I'm uploading a video or doing a live stream or if I've got something going on, you will be the first to know. Also, let's not forget I've got an Instagram. That's right. It's kind of hard to read. This is very bold. But if you want to find me on Insta, go to Chris Ann Compton or search Chris Ann Compton. You'll find me. You'll see my big mug. You'll know it's me. And go ahead and follow because I will be posting their personal things, but also about what it is that I'm doing. And I just want to find ways to connect with you more. So either on Insta or uh, textcac.com, however it works for us, is the way that it works. All right, now on to today's question. This question comes from David Zarate Jr. David says, how do I connect with my angels? And how do I know when he is communicating with me. I need a sign to truly believe. I'm spiritual and I do believe in God. I just need something to hear or see. Thank you and bless you. Aww. Bless you too, David. I love that you are in search of your angels. And I think it's perfectly okay, by the way, to want a sign. In fact, I believe that we have universal laws in place. And one of those universal laws is ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find and of course knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Now if you want to communicate with your angels, it's really simple to do that. You just talk to them. They are, whether you feel them or sense them, they are around you at all times and so are your spirit guides. But I understand the need to receive messages and actually to to encounter evidences that would validate that you are attended by these angels. I get it. In fact, I've told this story many times, but I know a lot of you probably haven't heard this, but I, I told the story of my first encounter with an angel. Now, this happened many years ago, and at the time, I did not believe in angels. I was an intuitive reader. I was a channel, and I was a deeply spiritual person, but at the same time, angels had never been a part of my experience. I just thought they were something people needed in order to get along in the world or to feel comfortable in the world. And so they made up these ideas of anthropomorphic entities that were there to protect them and to guide them. And I always understood why humans would need to do that, but I just never, I never bought into it until that day <laughs> that I had an encounter with an angel. And because I've told this story so many times, I'm not going to go into all of the specifics, but suffice it to say that that encounter knocked me off my feet right there in the moment of that experience with this angel. Actually, it was an archangel. And despite this evidence that angels exist because I felt it running through my body and I could see it with my eyes. Despite all this, do you know, David Zarate Jr., that I had the audacity, <laughs> I had the audacity to doubt nonetheless, to doubt nonetheless. And I actually asked this archangel who was appearing before me in an evidential way, probably in a way that you would love to experience, okay? 
I was I'm a little more thick headed. <laughs> Despite that, I had the audacity to ask for additional evidences. I'm like, okay, this is cool and all. And yes, I'm convulsing and I can feel the electric shock and my eyes are open and I can see you. And I acknowledge all that. But nonetheless, I'm going to need you to prove it to me. To prove to me that you are who you say that you are. And so I asked this archangel to do a little more. You know, the Bible says we can test the spirits. And if the spirits are of the lights, if the spirits are of God, they don't have any problem with this whatsoever. And I knew that. And so I tested this one archangel and I said, I need you to put your name in, into my environment three times in the next week. And if you do, I will believe that this encounter not only happened legitimately, but that angels are real. And sure enough, long story long, in the next few days, I received three separate validations. This angel's name appeared in my experience. And I knew without a doubt that not only had that encounter really happened, but that angels were real. My point, though, is that first I had the intention, like I wanted to know, just like you. You want to know that there are angels and that you're attended by angels. And the second thing I had was a question, a request rather. I requested that this archangel do a little more. And I was very specific about what I asked for. Now, of course, if I had been too specific, if I had said, I need you to dance on my rooftop and play me a jingle with a fiddle. Now, would, would this archangel have done that? I maybe. He does have a sense of humor. <laughs> Would he? Have, probably not. If we make it so difficult, if we erect all these obstacles, that indicates a resistance and a lack of a willingness to believe on our part. And when there's a lack of willingness to believe, spirit is not as dynamic. Spirit is much more subtle in our environment. But if we ask with the intention of receiving, and because we truly would love to know, then spirit always responds. That's the principle you see. That's the universal law. Ask and it shall be given. And so David, I would say to you, have you asked? Have you really asked? Have you gotten, gone into a prayer session? Have you opened up your heart? Have you allowed those doubts? Are there angels? Am I really attended by a heavenly host, just like all of this real. Have you allowed those doubts to fall away, to create an opening within your mind, body, and spirit, an opening that allows access by spirit? Because you need to do that. You need to have the requisite unbelief and hope and intention in order for spirit to, in an evidential way, give you what it is that you want. And so, Maybe we start with setting, us out, setting aside the doubts and the fears and all of the things that are attached to this idea that maybe you're not attended by angels or maybe you are alone or is this real? All of that stuff, like we probably have to start there and deal with that. Then we cultivate the intention and my intention is to have a rendezvous with my angel. My intention is to know my angel's name. My intention is to have an evidence given to me by my angel, your name, in my environment, three times in a week. And then when you have that intention, you ask, you ask for it. Now, here's where people typically mess up. Okay, they have an intention. They're like, yeah, I know I want that. And then they put the action behind it. They say, I'm going to ask for that. And then they do. And then once they ask for it, they stop looking. <laughs> they, they remove themselves from the flow of that connection. And they don't look in their environment. They don't look for synchronicities. They don't examine their dreams. They don't even know if they do dream. They don't even work with their dreams. They don't read books. They don't listen to conversations. They don't look around to see the evidence that spirit inevitably deposits because it's inevitable. If we ask, spirit will do that. But see, in the beginning, David and everybody else. When spirit is starting to talk with us and when our angels are starting to move within our life experience, it's very subtle. It's very subtle because it must be. 
Angels are never going to barge into our experience and demand that we have an encounter or demand that we acknowledge them. No, it's always very gentle. David, David over here. Do you feel that? David, did you hear that tone? Something like music? David, that's us. Or David, did you remember your dream? Do you remember seeing me in the dream or an energy or a sensation? David, are you meditating? David, are you meditating? Because that's an easy encounter. When you open up the imaginal landscape, I can very easily meet you there. But are you meditating in the first place? David, are you looking at the numbers that are showing up in your experience? Are you looking at the synchronicities, the things that repeat? Are you paying attention? Most people do not pay attention. And therefore, the majority of spirit messages, much less angelic messages and interaction, is entirely lost on us. And so once you ask, you've got to pay attention. And within a moment, within time, it will happen. Now, I had the audacity <laughs> I had the audacity to put a time limit on it. Oh my God, Crystal Ann Compton. I had the audacity to say, oh, within a week, this is what I want. But you know what? That's what he did. That's what he did. And I was paying attention and I was looking around on the periphery of my life. And as it turns out, I really didn't need to because the evidences were hella dynamic, like very dynamic that came through. But I was none nonetheless, I was being diligent and disciplined in this way. I was checking my environment and the angel answered and here's the other thing is that angels present in different ways so many of us want archangel michael to descend from the heaven with a choir of angels and the trumpets and before us to give us a message but like that's very rare that's very rare some of us have encounters and experiences like that but it's very rare a lot of times they present in feeling ways an activation of the heart or the heart chakra a warming in the body or a comforting feeling when you're feeling anxious or just the sense of a presence. And sometimes angels show up in lights. Maybe the lights flicker or maybe you see little pinpricks of light with your naked vision. That's often angels. Now, is that bombastic? No. Is that, you know, knocking over the house with its powerful evidence no but it's the angels nonetheless and if you acknowledge this is important listen if you acknowledge whatever subtle thing they do in response to your request and say hey i felt that hey i noticed that i notice you're here if you acknowledge it you potentiate it meaning the more messages come through the louder they are and by the way if you want it to be louder or if you want it to make more 3d sense ask for it Say something like, hey, I see that light, that pinprick of light. I notice it's pink. Who are you? What's your name? And what are you trying to tell me? And here again, you've just asked a question. So what do you have to do? Observe and listen. You may not get the answer right there, or you may. It may come in as a very clear message, or it may be, again, a feeling, a, a clairvoyant vision, and so on and so forth. Trust. Trust that this principle works because it does. Also trust that God has given his angels charge over you, meaning he's told his angels specifically, go take care of David. Go take care of my people. And if by taking care, that means we need to know you're here, then let David know that you're here. Trust that. And move with your actions and your intention and your observation in the truth of that. And you will receive a validating message from your angels. Drop your expectation, David and everybody else. Again, we don't need Archangel Michael to descend from the heavens. That's too much anyway. Trust me. Trust me. We don't need all that. We just need some kind of validation. And we're open to it. And we're paying attention. If that's what we're doing, we will have a visitation from the angels. And also, if you want to go ahead and do a search for Crystal Ann Compton, Powerful Angel Invocation on YouTube, you will find a specific invocation that really works. It really works. If you do this invocation, I think I also tell the full story of my angel encounter in that video. 
But if you do the full invocation, you will call in and empower your angels. And the testimonies that I've received from people all over the world who have done that invocation would blow you away. Ask and it shall be given. And on that note, thank you so much for your question, David. And thank you for everybody who watched all the way through. I really just love that we are connected truly. And I'm so grateful going into this new year, 2021. I'm just so grateful to have you in my life and to be able to read your comments. Like you guys lift me up. Sometimes I will be signing into YouTube. First of all, just know. I think I have hundreds of videos that have been up for many, many years. And some of the comments that I receive are just deplorable and awful. And I would dare say evil. They're bad. They're bad. And so I don't I don't get a ton of them anymore. But let me just say that each comment that you leave for me, I mean, sometimes I sign on and I'm just in a kind of a low vibration. I've had some things happen in my life and I read just a kind word from from you guys. And there are some of you who just leave a kind word. I'm getting emotional <laughs> on every video. Thank you. Like I read those and those mean something to me. And this platform, as much as I'm being algorithmically suppressed. Nonetheless, this platform is a way for us to stay connected. And also, we can do that through text. I can text you directly. So I don't have to worry about whether anybody's suppressing me. And also Instagram. That's just another way for us to connect. Thank you guys for being my spiritual family. And until next time, please know that I have got nothing but love for you. I hope to see you in the Intuitive Intensive. Bye, guys. <laughs>